Hello, and welcome to Cheers to Fears, where we take horror films and turn them into drinking games. We're your two hosts. I'm Tucker. And I'm Alex. Today will be the start of a new franchise as we make a drinking game for each and every Scream movie, starting with the first installment directed by Wes Craven. Weirdly enough, we haven't really reviewed Wes Craven films on this channel, despite him creating so many classics such as Nightmare on Elm Street and The Hills Have Eyes. The movie is written by Kevin Williamson, who also wrote the screenplay for another late 90s horror movie, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Scream follows an all-star cast such as Drew Barrymore and Matthew Lillard in high school as they and their friends learn that there is a serial killer in the neighborhood. One of the teenagers, Sydney, is really shaken up by the murders because her mother was also murdered a year ago. Many of the people in Scream start to realize that the events are starting to play out like a scene in a horror movie. Sydney starts receiving threatening phone calls as she seeks to find the person that is tormenting her. We have reached the point in the video where we will warn you that we are going to be going over spoilers for the rest of the movie. Our biggest recommendation is if you are a big slasher movie fan, is to watch the movie in its entirety now with our drinking rules posted on screen. After that, you can come back and watch the rest of the video when the movie is over. With that out of the way, let's move on to an in-depth look for the rules for the movie. So I think we don't need to really say it, but the first rule is death, and this gave us nine sips this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, in saying that, there was a lot of deaths that were faked out. So for instance, Dewey getting stabbed in the back. Yeah. Uh, we took a sip for that, even though it turns out he was alive. Uh, so with that being said, the numbers are inflated a little bit. Yeah, and the reason we do that, because we're trying to put ourselves in the first watch mentality, so it's mm -hmm. like, we. We pretend like we've never seen the movies, so if we see that happen, we're going to assume that's a death, so we count it. Yeah. And we kind of want to do that just because, you know, there's people that haven't seen the movie yet, so we want to put us put ourselves in their shoes. Yeah. Uh, one more that we, I guess, included as a death, just because she was talked about so much with Sydney's mom. Uh, yeah. That will go along with another rule further down the road. We'll keep this second rule short and sweet because you guys already know what it is and there's not much to talk about. That rule is whenever you hear somebody scream, cry, or yell, you take a sip, and that total came to 21 sips. Yeah, it's a typical slasher movie. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on to rule number three. It's whenever somebody talks about horror movie tropes, or anything meta happens, or if the movie is self-aware, and this ended up in 25 sips. This rule can kind of be left up to interpretation depending on how you look at it, but we included some examples of them saying like, this is straight out of a horror movie. You were like, why would somebody in a horror movie run upstairs rather than out the front? Yeah, house? exactly. Some, stuff like that. It happens a lot and obviously Scream is known for being meta and self-aware and talking about the horror movie tropes. So 25 sips, it gets you a lot of drinks and depending on how you look at it, it might end up getting, giving you more too. Mm -hmm. so. Is that the one where the guy had knives for fingers? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Freddy, that's right. I like that movie. It was scary. Wow, well, the first one was, but the rest sucked. And let's move on to rule number four, which is whenever there's a phone call, you take a sip. This totaled 11 sips. Yeah, and it kind of helped popularize the phone call horror trope where the calls are coming from inside the house or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously done in Black Christmas, but this solidified it. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. Especially like lines with like, what's your favorite scary movie, right? Oh yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. And now carrying on to rule number five, it's whenever you see the ghost face mask. And then this happened 20 times, so we took 20 sips for it. Mm -hmm. The reason we did this is there was some fake outs, and I feel like the mask is so easily accessible that I feel like it's just better to use that overall instead of like whenever you see the killer. Yeah. And yeah, it's just easier to count every time you see that face rather than wondering and thinking, oh, is that an actual killer? Or is that just someone dressed as a killer? Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it's it's just making it easier for everybody watching. Yeah. You don't have to think too much about mm -hmm. it. It's probably gonna come back to bite us in a few later installments, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Moving on, if you hear the name of a horror movie or a horror movie character mentioned by name, you take a sip. The total for this came to 37, which is quite a bit more than we were expecting. Yeah, I was expecting a lot, but this is, it, it was more than I expected for sure. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? Um, Halloween. And we included things like, you know, in the hallway when the janitor's cleaning, they call him Fred and he's wearing that striped shirt and stuff. Yeah. Obviously a reference to Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Or they mention Jamie so many times in the movie, obviously being a reference to, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, they mention her, but like she's so, uh, I guess, connected to the horror genre, like we couldn't really pass it up, right? Well, of course they are. It's impossible to deny it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And every time they mention her, they're 
referring to a movie that she's in, like Halloween. Halloween, or, yes. Or, you know, they even mentioned how she was in Prom Night and stuff. Prom Night. Sure. They mentioned she was in Prom Night. Yeah. And it kind of goes without saying with there being this many drinks, but there was a lot of scenes that were mercied, so just keep that in mind when you're watching. So moving on to rule number seven, it's whenever somebody breaks the scream rules of horror. And this is kind of where we got our slasher sin rule that we use in a lot of our slasher movies. Jesus Christ, you don't know the rules? There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance, number one, you can never have sex. Yeah. Sex equals yes. death. Okay, number two, you can never drink or do drugs. And number three, never, ever, ever, under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. I'm getting another beer, you want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back! So that's where our slasher sin originated from, basically. Anyways, this rule resulted in seven sips. Let's move on to the next rule, which is whenever somebody talks about a character that previously died in the film. This can include Cindy's mom, which is why we added her on the death toll. Yeah. Uh, same with like Casey and Casey's boyfriend. Or uh, for instance, if they mentioned like Tatum after she died, that would be another one. Yeah. Only a year ago, Maureen Prescott, wife and mother, was found raped and murdered not far from this peaceful town square. But in total, that came to 18 sips. Yeah, and you pretty much covered everything there is to say about that rule, so we'll move on to rule number nine. It's whenever you see a live news report. And this gave us a total of eight sips, and just to clarify, this is whenever we see it, like, in person, when Gail's, you know, recording in person at the scene or whatever, or it could be a newscast that you see on the TV that somebody's watching. Mm -hmm. And so for the last rule we have for our drinking game is whenever Billy acts suspicious, and that gave us a total of seven sips. Uh, this was also kind of hard to judge, and this will definitely vary from person to person, so interpret it as you like. Uh, so for example, what we did is, I thought it was very suspicious when he shot somebody, so I included a sip for that. But I mean, obviously at that point you know he's the killer, so that's, I feel like, not really left up to interpretation. Yeah. So it's just kind of however you want to do it. Yeah. So that wraps up all the rules, and the total number of drinks that we got for this movie was 163. That is the equivalent to drinking just barely under five and a half cans based on our 30 sip per can scale. And it's one of the more difficult drinking games that we've had mm -hmm. since Halloween, I'd say. Oh yeah, so if you want a harder drinking game, I feel like a lot of slasher movies are the way to start. <laughs> oh yeah, slashers yeah. seem like they they have the most deaths, most screaming, you know, yeah. slasher sins always pile yeah, up Yeah, I feel like a lot of that it's... Like, as Scream mentions, it kind of repeats all the same formulas. So, like, exactly. it's a lot easier to make rules and find, like, tropes in the horror movies. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Some of the rules that were specifically bad for this movie was whenever you see Ghostface Mask, mm -hmm. or when the movie was being self-aware or meta. Those happened a lot, and it just helped wrap up those numbers, really. Mm -hmm. And, like, one, like, very blatant instance of this is, like, uh, I think it was at the party. I think Randy was asking, like, how many Hellraiser movies are there? And somebody says, I don't even know how many there are, like, nine, ten. I don't know how many there was in, what was it, 96? <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. But then, either way, they say over five, so that's instantly mercied. How many evil dead? Yeah. How many Hellraiser? Oh, yeah. Right here. Mom, Terra Train. Prom night. How come Jamie Lee Curtis is in all of these movies? She's the screen. And even in the opening scene, before we even got the title card, there was a lot of reference made. Like, they were asking, what's your favorite scary movie? And then she was saying Halloween. And then they asked about Jason, or they asked about who the killer was in Friday the 13th, so that's yeah. just another reference. There was a lot of references, even in the opening scene. Yeah, exactly. And talking about the opening scene, it, I feel like it's game-changing at this point. Yeah. The main reason, obviously, like, they have the line, like, what's your favorite scary movie? The whole phone call in the house thing. But they likely got the idea from Psycho as the main character was killed off, like, what, halfway through the movie? Oh, halfway, yeah. But then this movie, they killed Drew Barry more often, literally the first scene, and everyone expected her to be the main character. Well, it was even marketed that she would be the main mm -hmm. character, but Drew Barrymore, and she was actually supposed to be the main character, but she said that she wants to be killed off in the opening scene, so they did mm -hmm. it and it just like took everyone by surprise and it was definitely a good choice in the end, I'd say. Oh yeah. And just to carry on about the opening scene for now, I guess, I like the fact that they make Casey decide, go to the front door, go to the back door, to basically choose life or death. What door am I at? What? There are two main doors. 
doors to your house, the front door and the patio doors. If you answer correctly, you live. Very simple. But as we know, if you've seen the movie, there's two killers, so it's really not up to chance. She's gonna die no matter what she chooses. Yeah, exactly. I like knowing that in hindsight. Obviously, you don't know that if it's your first watch around, mm -hmm. but yeah, I do like that. Yeah, it's just something that's really subtle. <laughs> Uh, I guess speaking of which, Scream tries to be the type of horror movie that tries to like move away from like dumb decisions. They try to make smart decisions. Yeah. However, it's usually typically followed up by an even stupider decision. <laughs> uh, so for example, like in the opening scene, like Casey makes some smart decisions like sneaking around the house trying to avoid Ghostface. Yeah. But then she like randomly stops in her front yard. And then Ghostface catches up to her and kills her. Yeah. It's like uh, they try to be smart and then like the horror trope uh, kind of kicks in and they just remember to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it seems like it's done intentionally mm -hmm. just as commentary on how it is, like, that's a trope in horror films. Yes. Yeah. Another thing about this movie, uh, the last time I watched it was, I think, about, like, ten years ago. But I didn't really enjoy it that much just because I didn't watch a lot of slasher movies back in those days. I think I was only, like, I'd say, like, 14 or so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, like, I really didn't appreciate the movie for what it was especially like everything being super self-aware so like you could yeah. kind of predict the movie but like you would try to do a lot of things different yeah i i get what you're saying and mm -hmm. i can relate to that as well like the first time i watched it i didn't really get it because i didn't know a lot about the horror mm -hmm. genre as a, yeah. as a whole but now that i have a lot more knowledge on the horror genre and like you know i understand when a movie's being self-aware mm -hmm. i appreciate it so much more and i really enjoyed watching the movie and just talking about another thing that I liked about the movie was the twist. I thought it was pretty good, and I liked the way they handled it. I love the fact that there was two killers. That's something that they kind of brought that was new yeah. to the slasher genre that wasn't really heard of. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the, Billy had a reason for doing it, I guess, where he wasn't getting sex from Sydney, or his mom left him and his dad, I guess. Yeah, hear that, Stu? I think she wants a motive. <laughs> I don't really believe in motive, Sid. I mean, did Norman Bates have a motive? No. Did they ever really decide why Hannibal Lecter liked to eat people? Don't think so. You see, it's a lot scarier when there's no motive, Sid. And that was kind of indirectly because of Sidney. It was Sidney's mom. But, yeah. But, like, Sidney was in the picture, in a sense, I guess. Yeah. Your slut mother was fucking my father. And she's the reason my mom moved out and abandoned me. And then, and then there's Stu's reasoning, yeah. which is basically he's easily influential. Which, yeah, he gives into peer pressure. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's, yeah, like, he's, he's crying on the phone after getting stabbed a million times, and he's like, oh, it's peer pressure. Police are on their way. What are you going to tell them? Peer pressure. I'm far too sensitive. Yeah, which leads, which, which leads me to, I believe Stu is probably one of the best parts of the movie. <laughs> yeah, like, especially for, like, a comic relief type character. Oh, yeah. He does a super good job, and, like, the humor humor just works really well I think. Mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of this just a lot of the lines that he have is just so memorable I'd say yeah so what did you think of the movie I thought it was a fun movie to watch for sure I like looking for the moments or the references I guess I should say mm -hmm. up like to other horror movies and horror in general I like that part about it I like the twist like I mentioned how there's two killers I do like that as well and just little things like, you know, in the beginning, how they make Casey pick a door, like we mentioned, and there's really no right answer. <laughs> little things like that I really appreciate. I know a lot of people think of Scream as their favorite horror movie or mm -hmm. horror franchise, and I could understand why, especially if you grew up with that movie. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's not necessarily my favorite. It's a fun watch for sure, don't get me wrong, but it's not up there with my favorites by any means, but it's still worth a watch. Yeah, definitely. I feel like you pretty much summed up the exact same way I feel about the movie, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I guess a lot of people make very smart decisions in the movie, which is a little bit more unheard of, but I feel like right after, they make super stupid decisions. Yeah, which leads us nicely yeah. into the award ceremony, where we award one not-so-lucky nominee, the Darwin Award. This award goes out to a character who made a stupid decision that resulted in them getting killed, somebody else getting killed, or simply resulting in something bad happening that could have easily been avoided. This award can also be given to a character who is just plain dumb. Here are the nominees. Today's first nominee is Tatum for going through the cat door as opposed to picking up a weapon instead. She was doing great in her fight, but then she immediately ruins it and ends up as her first nominee. The second nominee today is Billy for giving away his big plan and for stabbing Stu so he is not able to help as much as he should when trying to kill the other partygoers. 
which is actually another reason to nominate Billy. Why does he not just kill somebody and then carry on to the next person, instead of constantly getting sidetracked by every single person that comes in the room? And last of all, we have Stuart, who is nominated for one simple reason. His motive is confusing. He says that he is easily influenced, which is honestly more than enough reason alone to put him on the list. And the winner is... Tatum. Despite a convincing case to put Billy on the list, we still cannot ignore the sheer stupidity of going through the cat door, especially when she is winning the fight. She made so many right decisions prior, but one bad one led to her death. And we get it, the film is supposed to be self-aware, which is probably why she ran through the cat door, but that doesn't mean we can pass up on her winning the Darwin Award. And with all that being said, we hope you enjoyed our drinking game for Scream. If you end up playing the game alongside the movie, or if you have any other feedback or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. Also let us know in the comments where this ranks in comparison to the other iconic slasher movies. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss tomorrow's episode where we are going to be making a drinking game for Scream 2. If you want to check out our most recent video, click on the box in the top right. Or if you want to see a playlist of all the drinking games and movies review, click on the box below it. Thanks for tuning in, and this is us saying cheers to fears. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. Not in my movie.